Team Star, the delinquents of the Grape and Orange Academy, is this generation's version of Team Rocket. Except they consist of incompetent weirdos who aren't that good at battling, just like Team Rocket. In Operation Starfall, you team up with Penny, the girl who's obsessed with Eevees, which is understandable, to eliminate the bullies that are Team Star. So, to see if she could take them out on her own, I, Nuzlocke Joe, have attempted a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Violet using only her evolutions. Before we begin, let me know in the comments which is your favorite evolution. Let's see how it goes. I start by creating my character, who is obviously Penny's twin sister. But unlike her, I can only have one hair color. That's not fair. My name is also Penny because our mom isn't very creative. Basically, I've heard that the other Penny has been bullied by these Team Star weirdos, so I decide to enroll in the Grape Academy to take them down. And immediately, I encounter a textbook bully, someone who doesn't take no for an answer and follows you around, continually trying to prove that they're stronger than you. So, I pick Eevee as my starter, and Gracion and I quickly take care of our first bully. She tries to get payback at the gates of Mesagosa, but to no avail. Before I can enter the school proper, I find my sister, the other Penny, being harassed by Team Star. And obviously that's a tragedy and all, but the worst part of this encounter is when I realize that my hair is way too blue. That's not even close to her hair color. So I quickly defeat these grunts and get to the much more important task of having a makeover. Can't save the world with bad hair. The downside of this change is that people are all of a sudden obsessed with me, asking all sorts of personal questions that are nobody's business. One student even goes as far as hacking my phone just to talk to me, instead of, you know, asking for my number like a normal person. As punishment for turning them down, because they're weird, Cassiopeia demands that I help eliminate Team Star, which does have the coolest name ever to be seen in Pokemon, Operation Starfall. They call again just five minutes later to make sure I'm still on board. Creepy plus clingy is a bad combination, man. Once I learn of the Team Star bases, I naturally go straight to the third one where I meet this strapping young lad who I have never seen before in my entire life. Clive volunteers to help me, but there are far more important things I need to do first. Specifically, wander aimlessly around this thicket in search of a cool looking rock. I eventually find one and Gracion can now live up to his namesake. Get it? Gracion is a grass type Leafeon? Didn't see that coming now, did ya? I ride my jetpack lizard all the way to Medali so I can get a TM I'll need for the next fight. And inside the city, I wander around and pick up half-eaten food that someone tried and failed to throw away. There's nothing Pokemon like more than pre-eaten apples. With that stuff out of the way, I am ready to head to the first Team Star base. Whoops. That's just a blockade those losers set up. And here is the real first base. Gracion and I bust into the base by taking out the single Murkrow they used to guard the entire place. Not very impenetrable now, is it? And then I am immediately proven wrong as the voice in the sky prohibits me from challenging Team Star with only one Pokemon. Well, dang it. I've never actually tried to do these battles with less than three Pokemon. I just hoped it would work. And just like I need a bigger team to complete Operation Starfall, I also need more subscribers so I can win at the YouTubes. So, subscribe and let me know if you're new to the channel. Alright, time to catch some more Eevees. Now the Pokedex says you can find them here on the path leading to the Elite Four. But I have my doubts. Mainly because I spend a long time running up and down this stupid hilly path and never saw a single Eevee. I even resorted to making the most beautiful sandwich ever known to man to try and bribe the little Eevees, but that still didn't work. It's not a total loss though, because I do get to see some Iggly buffs get blown away by the wind. As a kid, I thought that any balloons you released into the wild would somehow make their way to Disneyland. I was a stupid kid. I now know that's nonsense. They go up to the moon, obviously. But I want to believe that these little Iggly buffs do get blown to the happiest place on earth. At this point, I give up, and just head to the fields near the first gym. After about 10 minutes, I find an Eevee eager to end bullying as we know it. Then, I break the cardinal rule of Nuzlocke by encountering another Eevee in the same location. Look, I know I'm not supposed to, but I need another Eevee below the level cap, and there is no way I'm going back to the pit of endless torment that is the entrance to the Elite Four. I wasted way too long there already. I head to Caracosta and try to tell this lady 
I don't care about the gym challenges right now, but she doesn't take no for an answer. Look lady, I have no intention of giving this wallet to anybody, so if you give it to me knowing that, what happens next is kind of on you. Alright, somebody about to get fired. The real reason I came here was to pick up a water stone, and after playing with my little cat, fox, thing, Ferion and Waterion are ready to evolve. Now that we have a team of three evolutions, I calmly walk up to the gate, and I'm just kidding, I try a sneak attack from above, but again, the sky voice tells me that I can't do that, and a grunt suggests that I ring the bell like a decent person. I guess there is honor among thieves after all. The team star leaders are so honorable in fact, that they hide behind 30 of their grunts, leading from the back as every good leader should. My eons and I decide to destroy their base in 2 minutes even though they gave us 10 and Water Eon goes above and beyond to get one extra kill. You can tell who the Team Star leaders are, because they're the ones driving these obnoxious car Pokemon. Can you imagine being a cop and trying to pull over one of these things? Anyway, the first Team Star Punk has Dark Pokemon. He leads with Ponyard against Grassion. My X Scissor is going to be a 3 hit KO, apparently, not 2 like I thought. So Grassion runs away with his leap between his tails to bring out Ferion. Now I thought Ferion would outspeed, but thankfully the Ponyard fell in love with her and Ferion gets fully healed with a draining kiss. I guess we had a speed tie because next Ferion does outspeed and defeats the Ponyard. I get intimidated by the Rever Room and bait a Steel type spin out. So I pivot to Water Eon on a Wicked Torque? Huh, maybe my guy was wrong about his moveset? I hit with a Surf that doesn't do too much before falling asleep. So I pivot back to Ferion and just in case he does have that steel move, I normal terrestrialize. Which I just want to say, it's kind of lame that evolutions don't change their terra type when they evolve. I then hear a metal sound, which is a steel move, I suppose, but all the damage the car manages to deal, I simply heal with a kiss. And just like that, I defeat the first Team Star boss. It was quite a bit easier than I anticipated, actually. Once I, you know, got into the base. My reward for being victorious is a flashback where we see all the Team Star leaders talking about some evil plan they are about to enact. I knew bullying was a problem here. It turns out this guy used to be a president of the student council before he joined this biker gang, and he is pressured into writing a code of conduct for Team Star. And I'm sure that the silly little star dance the grunts do before every battle is one of the rules. The code also says that once I've defeated a leader, his base are belong to me. So I take his badge, but he goes down swinging with the best Pokemon insult this side of Alola. Outside of my new base, Cassiopeia calls me to reminisce about this dude and orders my sister to give me some goods. And that is barely any money at all. Only four more bases, and then the days of my sister being bullied are officially over. There's nothing else to do, so I head straight to the next base. I mean, I do get Rain Dance first, but we'll see that it's not actually necessary. I make short work of the grunt at the gate, destroying his self-esteem in the process, and once again, see the honorable Team Star leader hide behind 30 of her random people. This one is a bit more challenging, however, simply because Grassion doesn't like fire for some reason. After defeating all 30, out comes another fancy car, this time being ridden by Mela, the fire leader. After going Super Saiyan, she challenges me to a fight. I had gotten Rain Dance to offset her Torkoal's Drought ability, but since we are in pre-existing rain, it wasn't actually necessary. Said Torkoal falls in a single surf that is powered up by both the Mystic Water and the Rain Boost. No surprise there. Out comes the car engine, who deals a whopping 8 damage with Swift, and does actually survive my Super Surf. After an unnecessary speed boost on his part, one last surf and Waterion is the winner. That was even easier than the first fight. Maybe evolutions are just way too good. You obviously now know that the next fight is not going to go my way. I got a bit too cocky. We are treated to another flashback, but who cares? Team Star rounded up a group of people at the school to enact some sort of evil revenge. After thoroughly crushing my hand, Mela gives a flame charge TM to my Water Eon? I don't think he needs it. Cassiopeia, again, drops some hints that she, or he, knows Team Star personally, and when Other Penny shows up, my Dragon Jetpack viciously assaults her for no reason. Penny appears to be suffering from Stockholm Syndrome because she's under the delusion that the star members are the ones being bullied, not the other way around. Okay sis, whatever you say. I get the dig TM, then return to the first star base I ever went to, 
But this time, my visit is not a peaceful one. A grunt calls this Operation Starfool, which is so funny I forgot to laugh, but then they're the ones laughing because I'm actually struggling here. After all, they're all poison trainers and two of my Pokemon are weak to poison. So things are a bit rough. I eventually manage it after a few healings and get to meet the poison ninja Koga, I mean Atticus. I start with Grassion against his Skuntank. On the first turn, I do two very important things. You remember a few minutes ago when I complained that the Terra type doesn't change as Eevee evolves? Well, for the second time, I Terrastalize to lose a weakness, and then I use Sunny Day, activating Grassion's Leaf Guard to avoid the Toxic that I knew was coming. The Skuntank survives my first dig and responds with a Venishock that does a lot less now than it would have if I were still Grass or if I had been poisoned. After healing with leftovers both above and below ground, the Skuntank falls. When the Muck comes out, I again set up the Sun, and even though Sludge Wave does a decent amount, the combined healing of leftovers with a Sun boosted synthesis and I stay healthy enough. A few digs knocks out the Muck. And now it's time to face the car, but not the one you're thinking of. Instead, Atticus sends out a little car on top of his big car. This is known as Carception. Being four times weak to ground, a simple dig knocks it out. That was easy, and it gave me some much needed leftovers healing in the process. The big car shouldn't be too bad, unless he outspeeds me, which I didn't think was going to happen. Grassion is pretty fast. Still, I take the hit, allowing me to set up the sun, and then I heal with synthesis. In just a few digs, the car falls. Or that was the plan until I see how little I did with dig. That kind of sucks. After seeing how much he does compared to how little I do, I decide to try and PP stall his Noxious Torque, but I let the sun lapse in the process and end up getting poisoned, which is perfect. So I start using Synthesis to help me survive and to soak up his PP. The Kindergartner in me laughed at that a bit, but he never runs out of his Noxious Torque, so maybe you can't PP stall these guys. Eventually, I decide to risk a dig that could either kill him or me, the odds are kind of up in the air. It does do just enough to knock him out. So Grassion somehow survived his dance with Toxic Death. That did not go according to plan whatsoever. We find out a year and a half ago that Atticus used to have a face and normal people hair. I wonder what happened there. Some more story stuff happens, and then Penny is, once again, harassed by my dog. Now that we're halfway done with destroying Team Star, I decide to venture out into the world and catch some fully evolved Eevees. That way I can get some non-normal Terra types. I find Umbreon remarkably quickly, actually, and Flareon only takes 20 minutes or so. But what I really want to complain about is the freaking Jolteon. I looked for this electric guy for several hours without ever finding him. I had to check multiple times to make sure I was in the right area, but I never saw one. This was even worse than trying to find Eevees at the Elite Four place. At least I get a plethora of berries to reduce super effective damage that I never end up using. I eventually call it quits and just go find another regular old Eevee. At least I'll have two non-normal Terra types, that's at least something. In the process of capturing this Eevee though, I notice a fatal flaw in my team. My newly caught Pokemon don't want to listen to me. You see, I haven't defeated any of the gyms because Penny doesn't care about them. And I almost got away with it too. But to get Pokemon caught at higher levels to listen to me, I need to get some badges. And that's the story of how I ended up defeating Katie with a level 51 Fire Yawn, who only sometimes listened to me. Electricion evolves as I blow through some irrelevant gym nonsense and get a full team of six evolutions. Time to take over the world. Or stars, I suppose. Mr. Harrington, a supposed former teacher at this school of mine, decides to inject himself into my beef with Team Star. It's none of your business, old man. For the first time, I get to choose which three Pokemon to bring. And they take down this base in record time. Only a minute and a half. Time for another reveal that is just kind of boring the fourth time around. Anyway, this guy was Ortega, the fairy type leader. I, as basically always, leave with Grassion, who uses a single leaf blade on the Azumarill, who I'm still not convinced is a fairy, by the way. Wigglytuff somehow made it back from Disneyland, and I set up the sun to avoid being paralyzed or something like that as she lowers my attack. I bring it back up with Swords Dance, only for her to lower it once again, but this time by playing rough. Whatever. Leaf Blade does a ton, but then I need to swap because I can't force Grassion to kill his lover. Ferion comes out on another play rough, 
but heals all that damage with a draining kiss. The Dashbin does manage to hit me, but then immediately falls in love. Huh, I guess there must be something in the water around here. Varion takes out the dog, and again, gets fully healed in the process. I really like this move. Ortega's last, uh, Pokemon, if you can call it that, comes out with a Misty Surge to decrease Dragon-type damage, which is very useful when you have a team full of fairies. I become Normal-type, lower his attack, and let him destroy his own pointless terrain. I use Draining Kiss a few times to get healed, eat a Person Berry the first time he confuses me, and then get really lucky and hit through the second one twice in a row. But I've used up all my luck here, so I decide to bring out Fire Eon for his debut Team Star fight, and he's immediately confused. Alright, instead, I give the honor of defeating Ortega to Electricion, who does not get confused and only needs to do a tiny sliver of damage for the knockout. It turns out that Ortega is the mastermind behind these environmental abominations they call Starmobiles. I mean, I'd like to think that pollution isn't an issue in the Pokemon world, but you have literal walking sludge and garbage so maybe let's go easy on these gas guzzlers, huh? With Ortega down, we find out that this old man used to be the director, and that apparently, some time ago, Team Star were the ones being bullied, so they decided to put a stop to it by confronting their assailants. Maybe these guys aren't all that bad. You know, aside from Poke battling, they still suck. I get another TM for the next fight, and disturb this Ursaring family with my loud ringing phone. Should have used Vibrate. I arrive at the last base, where unlike all of the other leaders, Eri actually does what leaders are supposed to and protects her underlings. For a while, at least. Said underlings are a glutton for punishment, so I'm still forced to take on 30 of them at the same time. Eri uses fighting type Pokemon, which is immediately obvious because she is ridiculously buffed. I start off with Ferion, who now knows Psyshock, so the Toxicroak immediately falls. The Pissimium also falls to a Moonblast. I use a Trailblaze here, that does very little, but it ensures that a Moonblast will kill him next turn, and I get a much needed speed boost. Next is Lucario, who is actually completely walled by Ferion. The best he can do is Aura Sphere, but with Ferion's incredible special defense, he might as well be smacking me with a feather, which gives me the opportunity to set up six Calm Minds. Now, this is certainly overkill, but at the last base, I can't risk losing a Pokemon. I just want to be sure that I one-shot the Starmobile which is why I use another Trailblaze, just to make sure I outspeed. With plus 6 attack, Lucario doesn't stand a chance. And just to be extra safe, I Terrastalize to become normal type, because he had a steel type attack, but it doesn't end up mattering, because a single hit knocks him out. Ferion is really carrying her weight in this run, isn't she? In case you couldn't tell, Eri is in charge of whipping all the other star leaders into shape. Like all of the other members of Team Star, she has a past full of bullying, and loneliness. Though, in her case, she was apparently bullied because she was too beautiful, too smart, and too athletic. Weird way to flex, but okay. Here, I like the juxtaposition of Carmen talking about Team Star as their greatest treasure, while Aerie just cries in the background. Clive and I discover that Cassiopeia is the real big boss of Team Star. What an unforeseen turn of events. Big Boss, aka Snake, formed this group to stop bullying but now they want to disband it to stop all of its members from being delinquent nobodies and getting expelled from school. In spite of that, I still have to beat them up after dark on school grounds. But doesn't that sort of fight normally happen, you know, off of school property? I arrive at the school, while it's still day, I might add, just in time to see Clive change his clothes in front of the entire student body. And he reveals he was the director the whole time. And then he claims to be Cassiopeia too. What another unforeseen turn of events. So anyway, I started blasting with my evolutions. The Psychic Monkey hits me just a bit and tries to put Darkie on to sleep, but I came prepared. For that, at least. A few turns, and the Orangutan is gone. The Obama Snow is next, and he immediately uses Aura Veil to make himself bulkier. I decide to stall a bit to run out the Hail and the Veil, because I can heal anything he does to me anyway. I had planned to swap to Fire Eon once the hazards wore off, but it looks like that won't be necessary. I pivot to Gracion once the Gyarados comes out, and take him out with two Leaf Blades after taking an Aqua Tail and Stone Edge. Against the Poltegeist, I become Normal Type to avoid a possible Shadow Ball that is never used because I got a crit. I utilize Leafeon's Leaf Guard against this Mushroom, and he doesn't seem to understand that Spore won't work 
because he keeps trying to use it, meaning I can hit him for free and do basically no damage. I get greedy and go for a swords dance, but that causes him to stop using Spore and almost take me out with a Giga Drain. I kind of forgot I wasn't a Leaf anymore. I do what I probably should have done several turns ago and bring out Fire Eon, who is immediately put to sleep. I thought we were done with this already. Fortunately, she only sleeps for a single turn and soon gets a flamethrower for the win. The supposed Cassiopeia sends out her last Pokemon, Skeledurge. So naturally, I bring out Watery on on an Earth Power and proceed to drown said Dirge in a single surf. I hope you're ready for some more twists because it turns out this old guy is not in fact Cassiopeia. No, the real Cassiopeia is some person with a hood who has an Eevee backpack. And oh my gosh, it's Penny. With that hood up, I had no idea. Could have been anybody. My sister has apparently been lying to me this entire time. Okay, time for one last battle. Here, I decide to do something a little bit fun to truly determine who is the stronger Penny. She leads with Umbreon and I with Darkeon, both at level 62. My body slam does a heck of a lot less than I thought it would, but I'm doing more to Umbreon than he is to me, so I think we're okay especially because I'm healing with leftovers basically all the damage that he does. Eventually, Darkeon is the victor with a combination of Confusion, Body Slam, and Dark Pulse. Out comes Leafeon, so I bring out my Water Eon on an x Scizor, allowing me to safely swap to Grass Eon on a Leaf Blade. My own x Scizor does less than half because of some baby's doll's eyes or something, and what follows is me raising my attack two stages as he tries to lower it back down with one. For those of you who aren't very good at math, 2 is greater than 1. I know, I was surprised too. So obviously, Gracion wins. Naturally, her Flareon comes out next, meaning that I get a free swap into Fireion. And as much as I'd like to use the free fire boost I just got, I can't. Instead, I use Dig. Her Flareon survives because of some more baby's eyes, but a second Dig does the trick. We repeat the same basic story as Waterion gets healed thanks to a Hydro Pump and proceeds to do not all that much damage with a Terra Blast, actually. Many, many turns later, and the Vaporeon eventually evaporates. Jolteon and Electricion are next, but again, my guy has Dig. Her Jolteon uses Baby Doll Eyes, meaning two Digs doesn't take it out. I absolutely hate this move right now, because it always goes first and I can't really avoid it. One Swift later, and the Jolteon jumps away. And now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Her Sylveon against Fireion. Just kidding, she just needs to tank a Moonblast to bait out a better move for Fairion, the Sociable. And it's another Baby Doll Eyes. Of course it is. I start with a Light Screen to minimize Moonblast damage, hit with my own Moonblast, and then heal a bit with Draining Kiss. I had planned to finish off this fight right here in the most spectacular way possible by using a Terra Boosted Last Resort, but two baby doll eyes certainly ruin that plan. We trade Moonblast back and forth until Ferion defeats the Facsimile Fairy. With that, the identity of the big boss is revealed to everybody, and it ends up being a happy ending for Team Star. Instead of being expelled, they're encouraged to keep open their bases as a new training ground. There is one last thing to address here though, and that is the LP that my sister gave me was actually stolen from the Pokemon League, and that's upsetting. Not because she's a thief, I don't care about that, no. What really sucks is that it wasn't even her money and she still gave me so little. She had a seemingly unlimited amount of money and she barely paid me for my troubles. That was insulting. And that just about wraps up Starfall Street. It was cool being able to use so many evolutions, but for some reason, Penny doesn't even use the best one. Oh well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.